Hey, my name is Ross Ferguson. I'll be doing the vlog today for you guys. I'm the co-founder of Patagonia Bee Products and I want to tell you why our honey tastes so good. And it's Patagonia. It's all about Patagonia. And so let me tell you about Patagonia. The coolest place, the most wild place on earth. Most of what I know about Patagonia comes from this, damn it, this book. It's a great book. Probably the best book ever written on Patagonia. It's by Caspian Ray. I don't know who that is. It's not me. But uh, some crazy dude, he walked from Ushuaia to Mendoza and learned a lot along the way and wrote it all down. Um, but so he started in Tierra del Fuego. So I'll tell you about Tierra del Fuego first. That's the very bottom of South America. It's a little island. Uh, they think people arrived there about ten to 12,000 years ago. Uh, and when the Europeans arrived, they noticed fires everywhere. It was incredibly populated, very heavily populated. And there were three societies of people. Uh, they were known as the Yamana. Those were the people that lived on the coast, or the Yagan, um, had two names. Then the interior were the Selk Nam, uh, called by the Europeans the Ona. Uh, they hated that name, so let's never use it again. And there was the Haush, and I'm not sure I pronounced that right, but it's H-A-U-S-H. -H. And so in Tierra del Fuego, um, you have an incredibly inhospitable place, yet people uh, were everywhere and they had life expectancies equivalent to that of the Europeans but they seemed to only eat crustaceans sea lions and whale blubber they didn't eat any vegetables um, and very little uh, very little fruits so um, this place the wind is always blowing the sailors hated it it was known as the roaring 50s and the ferocious 40s uh, those are the latitudes yeah, the latitudes. Um, and so if you move a little further up and you go to the mainland of South America, the next really cool place you'll find is Torres del Paine. And that is just this incredible rock formation. There are caves around there where there was the uh, Mylodon. Mylodon was found. Um, they, found they found hide from the Mylodon. And the hide was so well preserved that people thought that there were living Mylodons. Thomas Jefferson really hoped there was. Um, he actually hoped Lewis and Clark might find a Mylodon in, uh, when they went out west. So uh, this belief uh, existed for a long time due to uh, Patagonia. And so Torres del Paine is definitely something you need to Google. Um, that's on the Chilean side. It's very rainy on the Chilean side. That's where the rainforests are. The temperate, cold, selva, fria the cold rainforest of South America. And on the Argentine side, mostly you get a rain shadow and it's almost all desert. Uh, so it's very distinct, but it's all one Patagonia, right? And so let's keep working our way north. Um, you'll get to Calafate, and that's on the Argentine side. Uh, the, it's split by the highest altitude peak, so whichever way the water runs, if the water runs west, that's Chile, and if the water runs east, that's Argentina. And so in Califate, there's this enormous glacier called the Califate Glacier. And what is pretty incredible is that in Patagonia, there are over 300 glaciers. It's cold. It's always cold. Um, even though that uh, it's desert as well. But Califate is an incredible place. Uh, and if you just go a little bit north of El Califate, you'll get to El Chaltén. And you might have seen the outline of El Chaltén. It is the most famous unknown mountain in the world. On your Patagonia shirt that you might be wearing right now, the outline of Chaltén is there. It's an incredible mountain. And it's where this dude, Caspian Ray, found his wife. Not me. Uh, this dude. Uh, but on the Argentine side, there are gauchos. These are these cowboys. Really rough. Hardly any of them have electricity. They have gas-burning stoves. They power everything. They take the batteries out of their cars or out of their Jeeps that, you know, are 30 years old. They plug it in so they have a radio to listen to. They use the battery, their car battery, for everything. Um, on the uh, Chilean side, it's not gauchos. It's Guau? Nah, I can't remember right now. Um, so don't quote me on any of this stuff. Use Wikipedia. It's way smarter than I am. <coughs> and so, uh, sorry for that mistake right there. But, um, Chaltin is incredible. You've seen this mountain. You just didn't know you had. 
Uh, that's Patagonia. And then if you go a little bit north, there's a really awesome place in Argentina called Cueva de los Manos. And you'll see these caves and it's just filled with all these outlines, the hands in a negative. And you'll notice most of them were left hands. And what these people did 6,000 years ago was they put their hand up on the cave wall. And then they'd have this, it was like a straw. And they'd get their little mixture of paint, they'd put it in there, and they'd blow it on the wall. And so the outline of their hand would be there. It's very incredible. They're all over the place. And uh, it's, a, it's a great sight. And in Patagonia was less populated. Um, on the Chilean side, you'll get the Mapuches. And they actually withheld European aggression longer than anyone. Um, they were recognized as a country by France. And uh, they fought for a long time for their independence. Um, they're still fighting for their independence as we speak. On the Argentine side, there's the Tehuelches. So we got the Mapuches, the Tehuelches, the uh, Pehuinches. They collected these nuts from these enormous thousand-year-old trees. Um, harvested those. That's what they were known for. Um, the Tehuelches hunted guanaco. And guanaco is the wild relative of the alpaca. Um, and they made these incredible uh, vests and ponchos that were sold all over the world. Um, okay, so let's keep going north. Um, we start at the bottom. We're making our way north. You'll get to Esquel. And Esquel's on the Argentine side. And it is almost like right on the line from desert to trees. And that's what makes Esquel so incredible. So Esquel is the gateway to one of the most beautiful national parks in the world. It's called Parque de los Alerces. And in Parque de los Alerces, you'll find South America's oldest trees. The Alerce trees. Um, they're enormous. The Germans uh, came to Chile to cut them down hundreds of years ago. hundred years ago. And uh, the only ones still remaining are the ones that grew in kind of a crooked fashion. Uh, and so the wood wasn't as good to use. So these beautiful, enormous trees, um, they didn't want them because the wood wouldn't be so good. And thank thankfully for that, uh, we still have 3,000-year-old trees growing in Patagonia. And um, it's the trees, right? So most of our honey is coming from these amazing trees and these amazing old growth, cold rainforests. Uh, the umo tree, it's quite similar, the flower is quite similar to the magnolia that uh, y'all might be more familiar with. And we have um, the tineo tree as well. And um, other awesome trees. And I'm going blank right now. Because um, we're just getting this new variety of honey from this other tree, and I can't think of it right now, and so I apologize for that as well. Um, but essentially, all I can tell you is Patagonia is incredibly wild. It's remote. There's hardly anyone living there. It's like, um, on the Argentine side, it's the least populated place in all of South America. And that's why this honey is so awesome. It's because we're not there. It's just the forest. It's just the bees, and it's just the trees. And, uh, you know, luckily, we have a few wild souls living down there harvesting this honey for you, and we get to bring it to you. And so if you want to know more about Patagonia, I totally recommend this book. You can even look here at the last, the last page. It has an update on the characters in the book. There's one character, Jackson. Um, it's kind of similar to Jacob, but I don't think, it can't be Jacob. But here it says, Jackson has started a Patagonian honey business that is not called Patagonia Bee Products. So, obviously, um, this book has nothing to do with us. And don't, you, you know, if you think it's us, you might not like us. So, it's kind of a risk to read it. Um, and I'm going off on a tangent now, so I probably better just stop this video. But, uh, you need to go to Patagonia. It's incredible, and uh, you get to taste it now, and so we're so happy, we're so proud. 
that you get to taste Patagonia. And um, hopefully we'll get to take you there someday. Hasta luego. Ciao.